Hey everyone, today I want to share with you the process, my process of preparing my reads for performances. So the first thing you do, or I do, is get a read, of course. I use a Vandoran three and a half, just a very, I think it is the cheapest professional read that you can find. Um, maybe not, I don't know. And then, and then I take the read out. Take the read out of the case, wet it for about, I don't know, like five seconds. It doesn't need to be waterlogged or wet too much or anything. And then I put it on the mouthpiece and I play. This is the first day of the break in process. <laughs> Usually I just do that and then I put the read away and then put it back in the box and I make sure that the read doesn't uh, go dry in between my uh, read break in process days so the, from the first day to second um, day I make sure this is kept in a well humidly camped area so for me, that is a Vandoren reed case. Uh, this is a clear one. What, it, what this does, it's got a little sponge on, underneath uh, that you wet and then, uh, and then you squeeze the moisture out and you put it back in here. And then it has holes at the top so that water doesn't stay in here and then, you know, grows. Basically like becomes a mold farm. So. I've never had mold issues with this uh, reed case. I've had mold issues with other reed cases, uh, but this has been really great. Um, and then there's this thing called add water while uh, when blue, a little thing. I don't know how this works, some kind of pH thing, I guess. Um, so that when this does become blue, I, I don't know if I can show you, I don't have another one. But when this becomes blue, I make sure I have um, more moisture under here. But then if I just leave it like this, I find um, if I don't play for a while, especially because my apartment is kind of dry, even though it's in New York City, um, because they they do central heating, um, I don't, which means I don't have control over how much heating we get. When it's a little bit cold outside, they just pump up the heating so it gets very dry. And of course, that, that goes the same for AC. AC makes things dry, so I always make sure I keep uh, my reeds in my closet, uh, where I, uh, and then there's an area of, the, of my closet where I keep my instruments and my reeds. So I keep actually this in a Chinese food <laughs> container. Of course, I wash it after. I, so it looks like this. I just put like this, close it. And then that just, uh, that just just kind of goes an extra mile to keep it, uh, keep the moisture in. And I, along with that, I use this uh, Bobeta two-way humidity control pack, 69%. I'm sure like, depending on where you are in the world, you can use different uh, packs, but this uh, works pretty well for me. So the, the way this works, this is actually designed for cigars um, and whatever else you smoke. Um, <laughs> it keeps uh, whatever this is around at, but basically it just um, prevents something to go from going too saturated with moisture or becoming too dry. So which is interesting, it gives moisture and takes away moisture, it just keeps it at 69% humidity level. I don't know how it works, but it works for me, and I like it a lot. And then, so I put my reeds kind of like this, whoops, kind of like this, and I actually came up with the system um, when I was playing a show in December, and these reeds are actually from December and I'm still using them, which is remarkable to me, but 
Uh, so anyway, so anyway, the first day I play the E chromatic scale one octave, and then on the second day I will play for one minute uh, something that just kind of goes up and down the clarinet, whatever. So I I don't know, play like. <laughs> just kind of circulate through the some of the scales and then when it's one minute I set a timer on my phone uh, after one minute I just put the read away and on the third day I, I play something with more articulation so um, if I'm just playing scales I would tongue it so that the read is more gradually introduced to stress whether it's atmospheric or like physical because these reeds are harvested in southern um, France where it's got a very specific humidity uh, and temperature level so especially if you are in a much drier or just like a different climate from that just imagine how much uh, stress the reed is gonna get and just imagine like if you're you know traveling from let's say Arizona to Florida in July or something like that, you're gonna be in a lot of, uh, I don't know, you're gonna go through, you're gonna feel very different, basically. And just imagine how much stress this little piece of cane is gonna get from that. And the way the cane works is that once it is warped, especially in the early stages, it's gonna, it's not gonna warp back, it's kind of, changed forever, um, to put it dramatically. So, whereas I think when it's broken in more gradually, like how I do it, uh, it can take a little bit more stress until it becomes no longer mm, what I deem to be able to be played on professionally. Okay. So after the third day, uh, I, just, uh, I just play. So the first day I play one octave, second day I do, I play for one minute, third day I play with uh, more tonguing uh, and I play that for like, you know, two, three minutes, five minutes, and then I just play a concert or whatnot. And then, and I find this is really nice because um, usually this is enough. But then I started using this because I was playing a show in December where you know, it's, I was not sure what the temperature is going to be because you know musical pits are notorious for just seemingly very random, very drastic and very bad um, em environments uh, for uh, the temperature, um, levels and humidity levels. So that's not only bad for your instruments if you play uh, woodwinds um, and other instruments, but it's also bad for reeds. Uh, one of the reasons why it's bad is because the quick changes or drastic, like very wide changes in temperature and humidity will change the uh, wood to, I mean, make the wood to shrink and expand and shrink and expand. And of course, as it does that, the wood gets tired and exhausted and not good in the instrument and on the reed and um, reed is, this is a lot less a lot less dense than this so this is gonna kind of poop out and won't have a very long lasting life so what i do with this is that basically i make like its own environment like a own little ecosystem so that it's not as uh, it kind of calms down the process uh, of change around this box so it's like a little shield so that's how i think of it and so far it's worked really well for me um so that's it if you have your own process that you like to share that really works for you please uh comment below and, or just message me i would love to hear from you and just know that this process is very personal and very local i guess 
I had a pretty different system when I was living in Canada, which, but I, I think, um, I think I would uh, use a similar method though, now that I have discovered this uh, recently. So anyway, happy practicing and hope you are all doing okay out there. Thanks.